My name is Stan Davis. I uh, am a retired psychiatrist. I think from my early teens I had collected records and did that uh, for many, many years. And then about 10 years ago, my wife bought me a wind-up phonograph at a flea market. And um, it fascinated me. It was a piece of junk. I started buying them on eBay, and because I'm somewhat mechanical, I started fixing them. At the same time, I just combed thrift stores and other places for uh, 78 recordings. I probably have about 10,000 78s, uh, probably a few valuable ones mixed in, but um, it's not my focus. It's fun just to, to comb through the collection and pull out something and listen to it. So this is Livery Stable Blues by the, the Dixieland Jazz Band. So, so the group got together and, and they made a lot of recordings, a ton of recordings at that, in that period, in 1917 on. It was all done acoustically, basically singing into a horn apparatus. It was very conical and they sometimes had different size ones. And the singer would stand in front of it and sing into it, and the sound waves would cause vibration of the recording stylus, which would then record on, the, on a wax cylinder. Then they recorded that same piece in the electrical age, so you can hear the difference. So, much more advanced recording. The way, the way most records were played, were, I mean, was played with needles. You could buy these in most stores, hardware stores, phonograph stores, drug stores, etc. It's a very sharp needle, it's a soft steel, and the outer part of a record usually had some gritty kind of compound into the shellac mixture. So it filed down the needle to fit the physics of the groove. And then as the record played, the needle started to become chisel-like. So by the time you got to the end of the record, it was starting to do some damage. People were reminded on the, the cover slip of most records, it would say, use the needle only once. But no one followed instructions. But here's a steel needle. They developed other things in the First World War because steel was of a premium. Um, they developed a tungsten needle that Victor called Tungstone, which was good for, two, they said, 200 to 400 plays. I'll play you a Tungstone needle. I haven't done this in a long time. I'm going to put a um, bamboo needle in. Probably aren't going to like the sound. Okay. When the recordings were made, they didn't use a wind-up motor. But they had a motor that was driven not by springs, but by weights like in a grandfather clock, would slowly turn the mechanism, which would give you a very consistent speed. The problem was there was no standardization as to what 78 was. <laughs> yeah, who knows. Caruso had such a strong, powerful voice that um, it recorded really well, better than a lot of other singers. Okay, now that's the wooden horn, which is, kind of mellows things out a bit. This was a very popular horn. A friend of mine who likes, has a big collection, 
likes this kind of horn better. When you have a, a record that was made in, say, Caruso's time, and you listen to it on an acoustical phonograph, you get an, a, a magical sense out of it that can't be reproduced on CD or an LP.